Good afternoon, everyone. If you're in Eastern Canada, it's just afternoon. So good afternoon to you. I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, if you're on the West Coast, then it's good morning to you. Um, very happy to be here with everyone today. I'm just going to start sharing my screen and give it a couple of minutes as I usually do for people to uh, roll in. We've got a nice intimate audience here today for our topic of understanding EDI. Um, I'll take it, like I said, just a minute or so to let some of the other attendees roll in. While I do that, if you've sat in on one of these before, you'll know that I'm about to ask you if you could raise your hand to confirm that you can see my screen and that you can hear my voice. So if uh, everyone wouldn't mind, thank you so much, Ronald and Wayne. Good morning, thank you very much. I'll go ahead and lower all the hands, that's fantastic. Um, I'm gonna get into the introductions in just a minute here. Uh, it's springtime, everyone, or is everyone happy that spring is right around, the, or we're in it, we're in it? I have to say, I'm still chilly, I'm still feeling the effects of winter here, so uh, hopefully everything gets to warm up very soon. Okay, I see some more numbers rolling in, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the show here. So thank you for joining us for today's knowledge-based webinar, Understanding EDI from the Simple Requirements to the More Complex. I'm here today with my friend Gerhard Peters, who is the president of Iversa. Gerhard, how are you today? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm good. A little chilly, like I said, but I'm okay. I'm, I'm yeah. getting through the spring fever here, so all is well. Gerhard is, like I said, the president of Iversa. Uh, Iversa has developed a solution called EDI for Spire, and he's going to spend some time with us this hour to really examine uh, the complexities and the simplicities of an EDI solution. So I'm just going to move forward into a little bit of housekeeping for everyone. We did a sound check and a visual check, so again, thank you all very much for that. This is a go-to webinar. It's not a Zoom, which means that you can see us but we can't see you. There will be a time where we'll be able to do these things face to face and see each other. But for now, here's where we're at. I do invite you to check out our events page on our Spire website, www.spiresystems.com forward slash events. Um, you'll see a variety of different events there that um, you can participate in. Our knowledge-based webinar series will be happening throughout the entire year. We do one of these every month with a different guest speaker. Uh, attendees will get a certificate of attendance. Uh, and if you are someone that's collecting CPDs, we'll happily provide you with that as well. I want you to know that this is not a training webinar. This is a knowledge-based conversation, podcast-style webinar. And so we won't be taking any questions. Um, and so we won't be answering any of those questions but we do encourage you to reach out to your Spire partner. Most of them are in attendance today. If you do have questions about any of the items that we're going to be discussing here today, your partner is always available to help you. Go over our agenda. We're going to take a look at what is EDI. Take a minute to really define that um, and, and a bit of the history of EDI. Where did it come from? How did it start? How did it make its way to where we are today? Who is EDI really for? Um, what are the challenges that businesses face, whether they are not using EDI yet, or if they are currently using an EDI solution, and what some of those challenges and solutions look like? And we're going to talk about the light versus the full EDI solution. And this is a very interesting topic. Uh, as I was putting this presentation together, I did a lot of different research, and there really is a simple EDI solution to a more complex. And we're going to spend some time examining that and what that means for businesses like yours. We're also going to uh, talk to Gerhard about some EDI tips. So having objectives, clearly defined guidelines from trading partners, visibility into that whole process, um, as well as continuing to evaluate your processes, which I think is something, regardless of the business that you're in, that everyone should do. So thanks again for joining us here today. We've got about 50 minutes together and uh, we're gonna jump right into it now. So 
what is EDI? I mean, by definition, Gerhard, it's the electronic data interchange, right? And essentially, it's a platform that allows for that exchange of documents between trading partners, right? And and where it actually came from, and all of this is very Googleable, I guarantee you, um, was a master sergeant in in the army named Ed Gilbert or Gilbert, depending on where you're from in the world. Um, and back in 1948, so a long time ago, way before I was born, um, he had the responsibility of feeding half of Berlin. And so the logistics surrounding uh, that Berlin airlift situation were, were quite large and, and complex. And so over that year, uh, Mr. Gilbert and the rest of the logistics team with the U.S. Army would drop about 2.3 million, according to Google, tons of goods into West Berlin. And it was part, thank, thankfully, part to the structured shipping manifest that this gentleman had developed that allowed for that to be a success. And it would take another 20 years to turn that paper-based logistics approach to a standardized, uh, more digital electronic format where these documents would be managed and later then developed into EDI. And interestingly enough, it wasn't until about the 90s where EDI started to have a really widespread supply chain integration um, where it was a critical facilitator of that early globalization. So these documents, rather than relying on snail mail, as we call it, or, or just postal services, EDI enabled instantaneous long distance communication really well before the internet even was a thing. Um, fast forward to today, EDI has the ability to integrate with different types of systems, uh, accounting systems, ERPs, Spire, for example, um, with the retailers and the vendor systems so that all of this is, is ready to go once it's set up. And it is a technology that dates back to the 60s, but the fact that it's still around today really says a lot about how effective and how efficient EDI is for those who, who use it. And so, you know, for a technology that's that old, Gerhard, if it, if it didn't work, it would have been replaced a long time ago by, by something else, right? And so it does work and it's, it's an industry standard. Um, it's all electronic. And it's got a proven track record, um, but it's not for everybody, right? So who is EDI for, right? And, and in the past, EDI had been primarily used by the automotive industry, uh, retail businesses, um, but today the format of EDI has been more widely adopted in a variety of different industries. And this was news to me. I, I just kind of thought, well, it's only for the retail stores like Walmart, Costco, Canadian Tire, Nordstrom's, which is one of my favorites. But actually, it's it's even adopted in pharmaceuticals, healthcare, um, construction companies are even good examples of other EDI clients in today's world. And so, while in Canada and and the U.S., it definitely is recognized by those big names that I just mentioned earlier. Um, at the end of the day, getting your product, if you're a, a wholesaler or a manufacturer, getting your product into some of these bigger stores, even in those other industries like pharmaceutical, healthcare, I mean, this will, will help grow your business significantly by leaps and bounds if you can get your products in these stores. But in order to do that, to deal with these big box stores, you need EDI, right? And it's really designed to streamline that data connection between your business and those retailers and just brings you so much visibility um, to a much larger audience. So Gerhard, um, I really want to hear from you because you are an EDI expert and, and all of the things that I've been talking about is, is public information online and I encourage our audience to do their own research as well. But the electronic documentation interchange there's thousands of documents out there, Gerhard. Can you give us and our friends in the audience some examples of the types of documents that we're talking about? Yeah, so um, uh, different types of documents. So each industry has its own series of documents. So when I talk about series, it goes by number. 
So the 800 series, that is pretty much all uh, pertains to uh, retail uh, companies uh, like uh, you mentioned, you mentioned Costco, Walmart, Home Depot. So those are the 800 series. And at the most basic uh, level, it's the 850. That's usually the starting point. And 850 is a purchase order. So at Home Depot, say you deal with Home Depot, you uh, the first thing that you're going to get is an 850, one year setup for EDI. The first thing you're going to get is an 850. And from there, companies require uh, additional documents. And then the next most basic is the 855, which is to acknowledge a purchase order. And so, yes, the 800 series is all for um, retail base, but then you have uh, all the other series, like the, uh, I believe it's a 200 series, that's for the, for the uh, medical uh, industries, so like a, let's say a hospital buying supplies from one of their uh, suppliers. And so, uh, yes, uh, uh, mainly here, as it pertains to this conversation, we're talking about the 800 series, but there are thousands of different types of documents uh, in the EDI world. Interesting. So, so different industries like healthcare, pharmaceutical, construction versus what we're more familiar with, retail, will have their own series of documents and they're all numbered, like you're saying. Um, do people actually remember these numbers or do they just remember the names of the documents? Because I... I'd be hard pressed to remember all these numbers. Yes. So yeah, and that's why when it comes to speaking to uh, an end user who uses EDI, I never go by the number. So it will always go by like a purchase order. I know that's an 850. And as the as the user gets used to it and uses EDI, a EDI solution, you'll see those numbers showing up in the interface in different places. But uh, at the most basic level, you talk about the purchase order, it's the 850, the 855 is when you acknowledge a purchase order, the 856 mm -hmm. is when you send a shipping notice to say what's uh, what you're shipping to the company, and then the 810 is the invoice. And so, yes, uh, to the average user, these numbers don't mean anything. And so behind each number, there is a, uh, there's a description of what that uh, particular EDI document is, yeah. Good. Good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, and and for the average user, I think what's important to identify is, you know, are you are you selling to these big box stores that require uh, you to use EDI? And so I have a little poll for our audience here, and I'm just going to go ahead and launch this poll. And so the question is, does your company sell to big box stores? Um, the answer could be yes. The answer could be no, uh, and your answer could be we are planning to soon. So um, you may have a wonderful product that you manufacture or distribute, and uh, you know you're wanting to get into like a Walmart or a, a Amazon even or Costco or whatever the case may be. And so I'm just going to give our audience um, a little bit of time to answer that poll here, and I'll be able to share the answers. And if you're not selling to big box stores, uh, one of your options here is, are you planning to at some point, you know, would you like to see your business get to that scale? So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple more seconds. Only about half of you have voted. Um, if you're one of our Spire partners in the audience, you can answer the question as well on behalf of a client that you might be thinking of. So feel free to go ahead and take a minute to answer uh, that poll. I always find it interesting um you know when shopping at any of these places and i looking at their inventory being in the inventory software business you know to look around and say my goodness i wonder what software they're using right so i'm going to go ahead and close the poll here and i'm going to share the answers so 29 percent of our audience um is selling to big box stores and 71 percent are not so far, nobody has any plans to do so just yet, and and that's okay. You know, maybe your business is growing in that direction, and uh, next time we have one of these, you'll be able to to say yes, I am. So thank you guys for filling that out. I think that um, it's important to understand a little bit of how this electronic document interchange works okay and so in my research and my conversations with Gerhard um, I identified that generally there are two basic types of transmissions for EDI one is a point-to-point -point or, or a direct connection so where two computers or systems connect with no intermediary no middleman over the internet um, and generally has secure protocols and this is where unlike what you're seeing on your screen your company will be connecting directly to that supplier maybe more than one 
okay? Um, the other basic type of EDI is a value-added network. Um, and Gerhard, can you, can you talk to us about what a VAN is, please? Yeah, so a VAN is, um, it, it's generally very uh, big companies out there that um, provide a VAN service. Um, and what it is, it's an uh, uh, intermediary uh, where, as an example, let's say you use Costco, and Costco does use a VAN as an example. Uh, their documents are all being sent to this van, to their given VAN that they're using. And then when the VAN receives them, the uh, uh, from the other end, for example, us uh, having a van, we go and check there for new documents and we find a new document that's being sent or purchase order 850 as an example. We then take and uh, load that into our system. And so it is uh, a really a middle, like you said, a middleman uh, handling these documents between two companies. And a point to point, and these are the different protocols. So technically a van, it's considered the protocol. And point to point, that is different where we would actually, with our services, directly connect to the retailer. And a company I can think of is um, uh, Chopper Drug Mart, for example. Uh, we have just a direct connection established between our systems and their systems. And so that's a point to point. And it really comes down to is um, what uh, systems these companies have in place, whether they do that internally in-house, they manage their whole EDI uh, platform in-house and in, uh, their documents, whereas a company uh, like Costco would go to a van provider and say, you take care of all of this for us. And then anybody who wants to trade with us, you have to connect to this van. Uh, and so then that's the typical approach is companies go both ways on this. Uh, in both ways work fine, and it's again it's different two different protocols uh, that are in use in that case. So really, depending on what the business um, has as processes and what their preferences um, in terms of managing their EDI, they could have a point to point. Um, perhaps they're only dealing with one big box store, and and a point to point could suffice for that purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, whereas if they're dealing with multiple stores, that middleman, that van service provider really facilitates the exchange between that business and all the different big box stores mm -hmm. that they have, really establishing one direct connection to all of them, right? Correct. And so uh, regardless of what the company is using, a van or a point-to-point -point connection, if you go into Canadian Tire and you pick up a product, that product somewhere was on an EDI transaction. So there is no product anywhere um, uh, that you would find in Canadian Tire that was not part of this uh, EDI, uh, of one particular EDI transaction. And yes, so then uh, Walmart, as an example, um, they have their own point to point and they completely handle all their EDI transmissions uh, inside. They have their own EDI department. And uh, yeah, so that is the, the difference in how companies go about it. And I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the other uh, aspects of a van um, connection, if you will, was that you know EDI standards and communication protocols change uh, as we become more modern and as time goes by. Um, the standards, uh, you know, they 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 have different standards as time goes by, is what my understanding was, and so that requires different. Um, capabilities and a van has the capability to expand to an EDI translation so the data validation of information that is going back and forth through this van provider so if if some communication standards should change with Walmart or Costco or whoever the case may be a van provider will be able to do the translation of that data between the trading partners um, which also helps with you know, any kind of reprocessing or authentication and, and reporting that's involved in this process as well. So there's a wide range of other services that a van provider can aim to simplify during that document exchange process through, a, through EDI. Is that, would you say that that's fair to say as well? Yeah, so that is correct. Uh, working with a van and one of the so one of the things that customers will sometimes encounter when they start uh, doing orders or selling to these big box stores is that some big box stores have 
their own internal uh, EDI solution. And so this company, because let's say the, the business selling to the big box stores does not have uh, EDI solution in place, this company will then allow them to order, inter, order uh, go into the portal and retrieve the orders. And so now it's fragmented uh, when you're not dealing with a, a van provider, it's fragmented and some, some of the big box stores will have you log into their portal to retrieve orders. Some of them will come from a van and then you have to have an intermediary, something in between uh, mm -hmm. where you uh, retrieve the orders. Uh, and that is the big difference between uh, dealing with somebody who does a van service uh, where you get them all through one source. Like it all flows through, in this example, our van. All Everything flows right. through our van. And even if there's a direct direct connection, that's all through our infrastructure. And then we, uh, you get the um, the uh, as a one source instead of it fragmented, uh, one direct to a portal, another one to another portal. Uh, so that's yes, that that's point to point that we were talking about correct, before, correct. right? Yeah. So really, those yeah. are the two differences. Um, Canadian Tire is my husband's all-time favorite store. I usually refuse to go in there with him, but after today's webinar, I'm going to go with him the next time, and I'm going to have this whole conversation while he's shopping. We'll see if he pays attention or not. So, <laughs> there we um, go. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, I found this nice little image uh, just through LinkedIn. There's a wonderful article about this that you can you can look up and and read some more about if you'd like. Um, for those of you who are not using EDI, and, and in the previous poll, there was about 70% uh, of our audience that does not sell to big box stores yet, or, or may not, or again, might be planning to. So if you're not currently using EDI, um, some of the challenges that, that adopting an EDI solution, again, whether that's a point to point, if that's what your business needs, or a van, as Gerhard was explaining, that allows that communication with multiple trading partners. Um, some of the uh, solutions that that are offered to you are listed here on your screen right now. And so still many businesses today, Gerhard, are using paper-based processes, right, to either um, procure payment or to place orders or confirm orders um, and processing and receiving these documents uh, via email. Um, believe it or not, some people are still faxing this stuff back and forth. Like I, I don't personally know anyone who has a fax machine, but I know that there's still some out there. Um, and, and still by regular mail, actually. Um, some of our older clients uh, still rely on, on mail for a lot of stuff. Um, and so the EDI solution Tell me a bit about other than, you know, being paperless. Okay, let's talk a little bit about some of the problems that it solves, Gerhard. So, you know, order time. Tell me a bit about that. Like, it must be so much faster. It must be almost instantaneously, I would imagine, right? Yeah. So the um, the first the paper or email base. Uh, the first step is you get your order. And that may also be um, just where you have the uh, the fragmented approach, one vendor sending it to you, their portal, one on a different way is um, is to um, where you get the, um, that's a paper base or email base or in some yeah. form digital base, you have to uh, then obviously key in that, man, that order manually to your system. And that's where, you, so the challenge is that's where you have uh, first the order time, obviously. So uh, it takes time for somebody to retrieve this via email or whatever method that came in and then key mm -hmm. it into your system. So there's there's a uh, saving time. And now imagine you have an order with 10 line items on it. So you're gonna spend a significant amount of time to uh, to enter the order. And the next yeah. is human human errors. And human errors, and one very basic example that I have, I have seen uh, quite often, is where a partner would send a, um, an, an order and they would have their specific part number. So the partner has, let's say, ABC as a part number, but then in your database and the Spire, whatever this may be, uh, you would have this part number as one, two, three. And so now yeah. a user that's doing this uh, manual data entry has to always make sure that these part numbers match up. And there really is nothing other than you may very well have a maybe an Excel spreadsheet to show, okay, here's their part numbers, here are our part numbers, 
and you have to constantly reference that back and forth. And so that's where you have human uh, errors happening uh, where the wrong product was selected internally and then all of a sudden you realize the wrong product was shipped out. Uh, and now when you have like an EDI solution, well, it's with a snap of a finger, part numbers are matched up uh, as a one time yeah. set and forget. And uh, you now reduce, not one, you reduce costs. You, your employee mm -hmm. can focus on more important things in your business instead of uh, manually keying in orders. Mm -hmm. And um, also the increase the accuracy in order fulfillment. Like I said, you can easily have one part mixed up and the next thing you know, you've sent something to the uh, partner uh, that is not the correct item. And then now can you imagine it goes back and forth, oh, it's correct, wrong item, taking that yeah. item back. And so, um, yeah, it does. Uh, in yeah. And when we talk about reducing costs, you know, not only are we reducing costs in terms of saving employee time, but I mean, I can't imagine the costs associated with a whole pallet of the wrong shipment going out somewhere. Right. Or, um, you know, another advantage that you were talking about, I think, is, you know, over here, it's part number A, B, C, D. Over here, it's part number one, two, three, four. The EDI process allows for the translation of that, right? And so we're actually mm -hmm. speaking two different languages, right? Si je te parle la français, you need somebody to translate that into English. And so that's the same concept there. And yeah. I think em employee time is huge. I mean, we want our staff, our team to be as efficient as possible. We want them to be happy in their jobs as well. Um, and this is something that uh, is a repeat theme in all of our knowledge-based webinars is efficiency, productivity, eliminating human errors and so the automation of this solution if you will um, has overall benefits throughout the entire organization talk to me a little bit about the um securely exchanging data with your trading partners because data encryption is something that um more and more people are are concerned about and so how does that pertain to the edi process the secure exchange of data yeah, and so this goes back to uh, what we talked about before, a van or a point to point uh, in there's encryption of this data that goes from one uh, partner to another one, whatever method there may be in place. And so that's obviously very important. You would not want this data to be uh, intercepted in uh, knowing what goes on between one company and another one. And so there are several security methods, like when it's a point to point, there's more than one point to point to solution. You have, for example, certificates to exchange. And, and for those who don't know what a certi uh, security certificate is, SSL, when you go to Google and you browse a website and use Google now, Chrome has on top where it says this site is secure or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it gives you a red warning if that site does not have a valid certificate or a, uh, a um, expired certificate. And that's exactly what's in, at play here as well. There's uh, one point to point uses our certificate to exchange. Uh, another point has another way of encrypting information, but that's what it is. It is also similar to browsers. You browse your banking website. That is all encrypted between you and the bank. And this is, this is very similar to that. Okay, thanks for that. That's very helpful. Um, so again, folks, if if you're not currently using EDI, these are some of the reasons why you might want to consider um, using EDI. And for those of you in our audience today that are using an EDI solution, nothing is perfect in this world. And so there are some challenges that exist in the EDI space as well. And so I want to take a little bit of time to talk about that with Gerhard here today. So some of the research that I did, Gerhard, was um, identifying what some common challenges are in the EDI space. And the one that came up in, in all of the different sources that I was looking at top of the list was the complexity in this network, right? Like it's not simple. We talked about before all of the thousands and thousands of forms that exist out there, but talk to me a little bit about the challenge that EDI users are facing just in the complexity of this network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so for existing users uh, who are currently using an EDI solution, uh, first, the, really, the, first, the first step is going back to what, uh, what we uh, talked about before is you have, for example, you may be dealing with 10 different partners, Canadian Tire, Home Depot, uh, Cabela's comes to mind, um, 
lows uh, in you have a different method of uh, connection to each one and so each one would have their way of passing on orders to you and and one of the most common one a common one is where the partner has a portal you log in to retrieve your order so that's one but each one would you would have to connect or or, or deal with uh, particular orders for each one from different sources and so that's the complexity. So really, it's complex inside of your business uh, when you uh, have that uh, in place where you don't have a central source for all your EDI orders. And so it's complex, but from uh, your perspective, um, again, it comes down to, uh, from the end user perspective, it comes down to um, the uh, having this automated versus um, uh, manually entering orders and taking orders, yeah. So if I'm understanding you correctly, the complexity really lies, like let's say I'm dealing with all these different stores, each one has their own format, right? Even though EDI is a standardized form of uh, document interchange, Walmart has theirs, Canadian Tire has theirs, Lowe's has theirs, and if I'm dealing with all of these guys, that can be hard to juggle, right? And so there goes back to that van provider that helps to just kind of take care of all of that. and. Mm -hmm. I think it also just kind of rolls into the next point here that the volumes of EDI are growing, right? There's more and more trade partners that are, are turning up. And so managing that volume of data can become unmanageable for, for a business if they're doing it all in-house. Would you say? Yeah, so, yeah, correct. And so uh, sometimes what happens is a small business, like like we saw before, we have... 70% that are currently not selling to a big box, but you may very well start to sell to one of them. Maybe you start selling to Costco and it may be one or two items. So it's very easy, you know, I have four or five orders uh, a month from Costco to process, so it's not a big deal. But then you start to adding another partner, another partner, you get up to yeah. six partners and that's where volume start to grow and, and uh, becomes more uh, cumbersome. Yeah, I have a friend and she started um, a, a line of uh, uh, body wellness products made from Palo Santo oil. Um, and, and her and her sister started this business in their basement and they, they made it all themselves. And she's gained a lot of popularity. She started off like in some of the hotels and things like that. But now, like groups like Chapters are approaching her, Indigo, um, uh, uh, Bath and Body Works are, are starting to approach her and stuff like that. And I had this conversation with her not too long ago. And I said, I'm doing a webinar on, on EDI. I think you should sit in because at some point she's going to have to face this. So if you are that small business that is expanding or at some point will, even if it's just one store that you're dealing with, like Gerhard said, um, you have to adhere to their processes and their protocols, right? You can't just show up with like a basket of your products and go, here you go, right? Like it just doesn't work like that. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about errors and missing fields um, that, that can happen in an EDI solution. Um, that seems to be a fairly common challenge as well. What have you seen? What's your experience? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so here it comes down. So number, from what we said before is, a, is an EDI is a standard format. But mm -hmm. still, inside of that standard format, each uh, partner has their own like fields, uh, uh, requirements. So then one vendor may use uh, one uh, line, they're called segments in EDI, that's a technical term, mm -hmm. uh, may use one segment inside of an EDI document because they have unique requirements. And, and an example may be like, uh, Canadian Tire, they may have one segment in it that says exactly where the employee is supposed to put this product in their warehouse when that product arrives, whereas Walmart may not use that segment uh, and it makes no difference in terms of how that product arrives. And so that's mm -hmm. where you have, a dip within the um, um, EDI uh, specification for a given partner, uh, you have different uh, requirements and uh, that's where uh, an extensive EDI solution comes in and, and can um, map a specific field or a specific mm -hmm. uh, um, business process and mm -hmm. be able to follow that. And so, yes, uh, that's uh, where you get uh, errors sometimes. And then that's where uh, one has to um, look, at, look at the requirements and specifically map that to avoid errors or missed processes. Yeah. 
And I think that the client, you know, the 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 human on on the other end, you know, our eyes are just not meant to catch that kind of stuff. You know, like there's some older formats and codes that exist that really, you know, if one were to look at them, if you're not an expert in this space, you know, it's like looking at Chinese or a foreign language or something like that, or Greek, you know, just a very complex language. And we're not meant to be able to catch these errors, let alone fix them, right? And so really working with um, uh, an expert is a huge advantage in, in automating error detection and significantly, again, working towards increasing productivity, which ultimately increases a company's gross margins, right? Um, is the cost of EDI rising? I, I've, I've seen this, I have it up on my slide deck here. Um, I, mm -hmm. I thought it was important to ask you that question. Do you feel that the cost of software and hardware and transactional stuff is rising? I don't really wanna talk about any one in particular, but as a general comment, Gerhard, would you say that, that the cost, I mean, listen, the cost of everything is rising today, but <laughs> particularly to EDI, what would you say? So um, that depends on who you work with. Um, in their cost structure uh, that uh, given a UI provider, I know there's some cases where prices are increasing in terms of exchanging the documents. Uh, so yeah, that depends on on the partner and depending on what we talked about before, what protocol uh, they use, like the point-to-point uh, mm -hmm. -point or the van, uh, that has uh, plays a role as well. Um, mm -hmm. So it depends. It depends on what uh, uh, communication method is in place, um, there is some increase. And, and when working with a van with a comprehensive solution, um, you essentially can avoid this cost increase. There's predictability in terms of how much it will cost uh, every month. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it just depends on who you work with in, in uh, their communication. Right. Protocol. And then I would imagine that also internally at the company that, you know, costs could be considered, right? So how how much in-house maintenance is necessary? Do you have a dedicated IT team that has EDI knowledge or don't you? And is your, you know, inventory manager uh, spending a lot of time on this? And, and, and so costs can be not just um, associated to what kind of provider you have, but businesses should examine the costs associated internally in managing that as well, because that would be a factor, I would imagine. Um, throughout every webinar that, that I've hosted so far, I think uh, another recurring theme other than human error and automation is real-time transactions and, and transparency into that. One of the things that I love about Spire is um, in some of the sub-ledgers, you can turn on batch or real time. And in the real time world, especially when we're talking about inventory, knowing what's available, knowing what's coming and having transparency in that is a huge advantage for businesses. Um, talk to me a little bit about the real time that exists in EDI. So, you know, that form goes out, it comes, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so the most common one is, um, it's one of the 800 series documents, uh, is the inventory, the productivity data, um, it's called. And so this is where a company wants this type of document uh, so that the partner, again, let's use Costco as an example, knows exactly what's available from their uh, partner where they're getting products from. And one example would be, uh, Costco has this large sections of uh, books uh, in this center. Uh, everybody who visits Costco, you'll know where that area is. And so Costco then wants to know exactly what's available uh, from the source that they're buying it from. And they want this productivity data pretty much in real time. Uh, or they could set it in, let's say, in a schedule. And so that mm -hmm. when Costco does their procurement, um, they will know exactly what's available from their uh, a supplier without having to pick up the phone and say, hey, do you have this product available or how do we know that you have it available? And so that is the, that's one example of a real time transaction uh, with transparency where you can um, uh, be able, for your partner that you're selling to Costco as an example, uh, you know that they know exactly what's available on your end. And then it's again, much easier for them to place an order and knowing what to sell to them as well. Yeah, that transparency and communication, I would imagine, just, 
you know, adds tons of value in terms of, again, these words, efficiency, productivity, right? Um, otherwise, how much time are you spending waiting to get a confirmation about, yes, that's coming, or yes, I've ordered that, right? And so I would imagine that internally as well at the business, this allows for much more accurate reporting as well um, in terms of what's going out, what's been acknowledged, what's been received, and all of that good stuff. Um, so some of the common challenges that exist if you're already using an EDI solution, Gerhard, thank you so much for, for that. I wanna jump over to our next slide light versus full and we've kind of been talking a little bit about this uh in the last 40 minutes or so um and so just to be clear a light solution focuses on the electronic document interchange delivery and receiving so the back and forth of the documents that's that's pretty much the limitation. Um, it can be integrated into an ERP system. It could exist outside of an ERP system. But again, it's limited solely to the communication and the translation of these documents versus a full, robust EDI service. Um, Gerhard, tell me about a full EDI service. So a full EDI service at the most at the uh, most basic um, uh, or most basic starting point is services. So when you're going to find or when somebody is going to find that they want to move to an EDI solution or currently already use one, as I noted before, is that it's fragmented. You go to this one partner and they'll give you specific requirements and here's how we want to interchange these documents with you. And with the other partner, here's how we want to exchange documents uh, with you. And so you will have this fragmented approach and particularly when you are inside your business and you know what EDI is, but you don't know anything that's behind it, like the technicality and the communications, uh, you are gonna be uh, lost very quickly. And so then a full EDI solution, it starts with the services. And so where you basically, uh, come to the service provider and you say, okay, I want to start using EDI and have it fully integrated into my ERP system. Um, I want to start using EDI and here's who we trade with. And so uh, a comprehensive solution, they will take your doc, they will take the partners that you're currently working with and hand it all over your hands off and then uh, it gets handled by one source in one, one portal. Mm -hmm. So I think what you're talking about here is what we have on the screen, and that's essentially the customer mapping, right? So you're dealing with more than one trading partner, a full EDI solution versus a light one. A full EDI solution will help uh, map all of this stuff. So tell me a little bit about what we're looking at here. Yeah, so here we're looking at a customer mapping list, and um, here's here's a and I'll give a good example of what this looks like between one or the other one. So if you sell to, let's use Metro as an example, you may very well sell to Metro and you may ship everything to their main warehouse and then things get distributed from their main warehouse to the stores. And whereas you could be selling to Costco in certain lines of their products, you have to ship it directly to each store. So I use the example of uh, books before. Anybody selling books to, to Costco, each store is responsible for getting their orders in to the source and then these, this uh, uh, source uh, sends books to each uh, location. And again, they'll be selling to another source, there they send it to the main warehouse, and it, then the main warehouse distributes it to the sources. And so that is uh, what you're seeing here on the screen uh, is the mapping of exactly that. You map one customer to their warehouse, uh, to the partner's warehouse, and the other one you map it to each store individually. And so here you see one where Costco is map to each store individually because this particular case they are selling uh to they're sending books selling books directly to costco to all individual stores across canada so part of a full service uh edi solution um would be that a full service would handle the customer mapping whereas a light uh solution would be limited to certain documents um that may not um, fit everywhere uh, in, in some particular type of industry or particular store. Um, one might be left to try and, and figure that out themselves, whereas a full service would provide all of that for them while maintaining 
industry and standards while maintaining again all those different types of documents. So if I'm hearing you correctly, one of the major differences is in the services that are provided. Um, that would ring true in terms of inventory mapping as well, which is what's up on our screen here. Tell me a little bit about how a full uh, EDI solution helps to, you know, if, I, if I've if i adopted a whole new line of Palo Santo products now, that now needs to get mapped somehow. And Correct. I'm a very busy person and I don't really know a lot about this stuff. So a full service EDI would help me how in terms of inventory mapping. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, here too, like I talked briefly, I mentioned before the uh, the partner having one partner, A, B, C, D, and you as a mm -hmm. supplier to that partner, you would have one, two, three, four part number. And so when it's a manual process, each time you cross-reference those to make sure you're sending the correct product. Here, it's a uh, map at once, basically set it, forget it, and you know that uh, Costco may send those, may send an order to you with their part numbers. It's translated because it's mapped here. Home Depot has a different part number, and again, it's uh, mapped, and it's, it's basically set, forget. And there too, it's having a, the full service provider uh, basically, it's all done for you versus you having to get involved in that process. And I think a full service provider also uh, ensures that security that we were talking about before as well. You take responsibility to ensure that the exchange of data going back and forth is secure, is encrypted, um, as opposed to people having to be you know, knowledgeable and responsible for that themselves, right? So a lot of advantages in in full, if that's what your business requires, right? Um, for some businesses, a light solution could very well do the trick. Um, they don't need more than that. They've got everything mm -hmm. under control. Maybe they're only dealing with, you know, one or two partners and it's very manageable. Um, but for some who are growing or adopting new product lines and wanting to uh, do business with some of these big box stores and more and more we're seeing that because of the marketing advantage that that offers a business as well, that perhaps you should consider um, a full EDI solution. So now that we've spent some time on that, I do have another poll for our audience because audience, I wanna make sure that none of you have fallen asleep here. Um, is your business, if you are using EDI, and I understand that there's only a portion of you that are, would you say by what we've described that your EDI is a light solution, a full solution? And again, if you're not using EDI at all, please let us know. Um, and if you, after this conversation are thinking, I'm not, but maybe I should be, take a minute to answer that poll for Gerhard and I, because it's always very interesting when we do these things to get a bit of an understanding of how you're responding to the conversation because it is a go-to webinar and not a Zoom. I can't see any of your wonderful faces. And so we do wonder, what does this look like for you? And, oh, these numbers are very interesting, Gerhard. I'll definitely share them in just a second. But it looks like it looks like there's a large portion, a little more than half of the audience who are not using EDI, um, but only a little more than half have voted. So again, if we have some Spire partners in the audience, uh, please go ahead and vote on behalf of a client that you might be thinking of in this situation. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. So if you haven't voted yet, you have four, three, two, one seconds to do so. I'm going to close that poll and share the answers here. So um, about half of our audience is using an EDI or a little less than half is using an EDI. And about half of that half is using what we have defined as being a light solution. A small percentage is using a full solution. Uh, a little more than half not using EDI at all. But here's the interesting, about 15% of you after today's conversation are thinking, I'm not using EDI, but maybe I should. I like that. Thanks so much, everybody, right. for sharing that with us. That's a great, great stat to share. Gerhard, we've got about 10 minutes left. and. Um, what I would like to do is, uh, why can't you see my slide? Here we go. Um, I want to share with our audience for the next few minutes here, tips that you would recommend um, if people are considering. So about 15% of you are considering EDI. Um, and for those of you who are currently using EDI, how you can improve your current processes. Because 
nothing is perfect in life nor in business. And even if you have a great, full, robust ADI solution or a light solution or you're thinking about it, there's always considerations uh, when we talk about software in our business. So, Gerhard, five tips that we want to bestow on our friends here today. Um, well-defined company objectives. What would you what would you say about that, Gerhard? So um, this would be, um, I guess, twofold for those who are currently on a light solution. Is look at uh, a more advanced solution that would uh, make it even easier. And so it would come down to having uh, this gold. Uh, maybe it is uh, something like, well, we want to start selling uh, the products we currently sell to, let's say, a Loblaws, but we also want to get these products into uh, Metro. So then it would be to for you to uh, have some goals and say we want to uh, current we are, we want to start selling our product which would sell just as well at Metro than at Loblaws and we would want to sell to both stores and you currently only sell to one of the uh, large chains so this would be coming down to uh, goals and and how you'd want to grow uh, using EDI processes. So uh, expanding your trading partners number one expanding to who you're you're trading with um but also i would go as far as to say if you are using an edi process right now examine what some of the imperfections if you will are um what are you frustrated by right now what is taking up time in your team even if you have a, a full or a, a light EDI solution and how do you improve that supply chain collaboration? Sometimes it's it's easier to identify what's wrong than to identify what we want. I find that that that's sometimes is the best place to start is here's what's wrong. Like I know what frustrates me and maybe it's a matter of, you know, noting down as you go through your workday, here's what I'm challenged by. And then when you look at what your challenges are, you can then say, okay, that could be a solution. Um, so defined, well-defined company objectives, um, well-documented vendor guidelines in accordance with EDI standards. Now, you and I talked a bit about this the other day. This mm -hmm. isn't on the customer, really. Tell me about yeah. that. Yeah, so uh, each company will have their um, guidelines uh, documented. And so the very first step is when you want to start trading with someone and you are uh, using a full uh, featured EDI solution is to get these documents. And it is really a question of uh, uh, to the uh, correct uh, person who is responsible for EDI inside of a given company to basically pose that question. Uh, can we have your guidelines in your requirements uh, for EDI uh, trading with uh, a given partner. And so mm -hmm. that's, yes, that's on the partner, but there's also much more that comes with, there's the technical documents that come with it to say, this is what we use, these are our segments and so forth. But there's also usually a larger document that describes all of the steps. If you want to do, if you want to sell to us, here are the steps for you to follow. Mm -hmm. And that goes beyond just the technical guidelines that they give you processes right mm -hmm. so um, and, and I think this is where language matters you know I, I say this often both in my professional and personal life words matter <laughs> language matters right and so being able to understand each other clearly understanding what guidelines Walmart or farmer pre sorry it's farmer pre in Quebec shoppers in the rest of Canada you know what are their guidelines right and it's important to understand that language and, and use the right verbiage so sometimes having that expert with you can make a big difference. Um, project management that delivers visibility and commitment. I think this rings true in software implementation period, mm -hmm. no matter what kind of software you're implementing, whether it's an EDI solution, whether it's Spire for the first time, or it's any other type of application that you're implementing, the management of that implementation project is, is huge, right, Gerhard? Because if it's not set up properly from the get-go, you're going to run into problems. Would you agree? Yeah, that's correct. <clears throat> if it's not set up and managed properly from the get-go, you will run into problems where a vendor that you're or a partner that you're trying to sell to or already selling, they will notify you. And there is uh, actually a thing that where partners have a uh, fee structure involved that if there's errors and there's issues, they will uh, give you a penalty and charge you for it. And that's exactly where project management and the support, you know, visibility and commitment comes in. 
to uh, do this right. Um, so yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even small businesses, right? Like I, I know that some, you know, there's probably a large portion of our audience here today that isn't a very big, big, uh, you know, business, right? They're a small business. There is advantage in that setup of proper uh, project management in having an expert work with you to understand, again, those vendor guidelines. Um, but also, even if you're a small business, to continuously be evaluating your processes. This, again, I think rings true no matter what software you're using. I think that businesses need to spend a dedicated time to evaluate how things are going, right? And maybe that's once a year where you do uh, an audit of your processes um, in terms of what your EDI operations are like, where you know the team who's responsible for this sits down and is able to pull reports and is able to query certain uh, aspects of their systems to say, okay, this is working really well, this wasn't working really well. Remember that one order with, uh, whichever big store, it all got messed up for whatever reason, what was the problem with that? So a constant evaluation of our processes, would you think is important as well, Gerhard? Uh, yeah, yeah, and that's again, where a full solution, an EDI solution uh, can help you with that and can do that together with you. And, and yep, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, um, and, and that also means examining the costs associated with either, you know, the project from the get-go um, or on an ongoing basis, right? Are the costs internal? Are they external transactional costs? Um, they they definitely, uh, you know, vary in a variety of different ways. So your constant evaluation and your audit should involve various different aspects from how is the software working to how is the team responding to the costs associated at that. And I think, Gerhard, your final tip is move away from manual data entry, manual order entry. Wouldn't you agree? That is the most important part, and that is uh, one of the things that that should really be the first first part of evaluating. Is like how can we move away from manual data entry or manual trying to match up part numbers and so forth. Mm -hmm. That is the, the the last and the most important tip I would say is is to uh, move away from that and have it all. Um, uh, mapped up and 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 yeah, again, move away from the automa yeah. automated. Automated. That's the automated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 let's get one thing straight here, guys. Um, just because something is automated doesn't mean anyone's going to lose their job. There still has to be a human decision made uh, with these things. But what automation does is, again, it, it eliminates that human error. It allows more transparency in real time. Uh, all of these different points that we highlighted here earlier today all move towards that ultimate efficiency, productivity, which in the end will help increase your profit margins as a business. Gerhard, Thank you so much for your time here with me today. Um, you definitely have a lot of knowledge in the EDI space, and I, I appreciate you sharing that with our friends in the audience. For those of you who are Spire partners, please reach out to Gerhard if you have more questions. I did see some questions come in, and I I don't take Q and A during these knowledge based webinars, but I did try to you know elaborate a little bit to to answer some of those for you. But if you are a Spire partner, reach out to Gerhard. If you are a Spire client, talk to your partner and your partner will be able to connect you with more information. Gerhard, thanks again so much. And for our friends in the audience, um, I usually announce the next webinar, which I will. But before I do that, uh, June is a very busy month for us at Spire and it's uh, about 21 days away according to my uh, event uh, calendar. We have a wonderful virtual trade show. Uh, it's free, okay? Um, we have all of our integration partners that will be there, short half hour sessions. They're divided into tracks. You've got the financial analytics, you've got operational utilities and sales. And so you can pick the track that is of most interest to you. Please go to spiresystems.com forward slash events where you can find more information about the June 8th free virtual trade show. I guarantee you will walk away with great knowledge. Okay. Um, our next webinar 
is going to be on June 29th because again, June 8th is the trade show. So the next webinar will be at the end of June where my friend Sheldon Waters from InfoTrack is going to join me. And we're gonna talk about consolidating multiple software environments into one nice ecosystem. So I guarantee it'll be an interesting conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for spending your hour with me. It's always a pleasure to have you. I hope you have a beautiful, wonderful day. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thanks again, Gerhard. We'll talk soon, okay? Yeah. Take care, welcome. everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.